What's going on guys, Mr. Jason back here again with another video for you guys. This is going to be different than the usual. I am going to jump on the bandwagon of doing my top 10 or top, yeah, top 10 disappointing and worst best movies of 2022. So if you enjoy content similar to this and you want to join this little fun little ride of all this video videos and content that I put out, if you enjoy this video, go check out my other ones as well. Physical media, out and abouts, going to conventions, wrestling events, video games, movies, taste tests, food reviews, anything like that. If you enjoy that kind of content, please subscribe if you're new to the channel. You won't regret it. And then if you enjoy this video, thumbs up. And if you're already subscribed, just coming back to watch another one of my videos. I appreciate it. And I want to start things off by saying Happy New Year. It is New Year's Eve while I'm filming this. And hopefully I have it uploaded by today. I'm also going to be doing a 2022 collection update video. I don't know if that's going to be uploaded before this one or not. But either way, they're going to be basically one after the other, whichever one's first, I don't know, but I'm going to do a whole collection update of what I got from like physical media, video games, movies, anything like that. But we're going to get into this. I'm doing this a little slightly different than most people are doing. They're doing like their top 10 worst, their top 10 movies. Me, I'm going to do it all in one video. I'm going to do a top 10 disappointments of 2022 because it's movies that I thought were decent, just they disappointed me and I don't think they're the worst. I guess you can kind of say that they were the worst of the ones I'm going to name. And I'm also going to be doing this from all the movies that I saw at AMC theaters. Because I am an a AMC A-list member. And I think I saw about like 30 movies or so. So I, I'll i be showing screenshots of like my tickets. And like the previous tickets or past tickets person purchases that I had from my A-list on the screen here. So you can see what I've seen. But I've done a top 10 disappointments. I guess you can say worst if you would like. Like I said, they just disappointed me. They weren't the worst, I don't think, anyways. And then I have my top 10 best. And then I did one that's called the top 10, top 10 mid-range, which was movies that I thought were okay. I did enjoy them, but they just weren't my favorites of the year of 2022. So we're going to start things off with... Might as well just get the disappointments over with. I have my paper written here with the order of how I want to do them. Top 10 being, I guess you can say, the best of the 10 and one being the worst. So I'm going to start things off with the disappointments, the movies that I thought kind of disappointed me. I expected more. And I'll give a little vague look into it, why they, I thought they were disappointing. But first off, we have it. Number 10, Violent Night with David Harbour. I believe that's his name, David Harbour. I could be wrong. But, I mean, I enjoyed it. I thought it was a good movie. But out of all the movies that I saw of the year 2022, from the theaters anyways, because everything I watched at home was probably older movies, that weren't even released this year. So um, besides a couple of movies on streaming services, but nothing that stood out too much. But anyways, the reason why I put this as an, under my disappointments is because I just felt it could have been better. I thought it was decent and it was definitely unique compared to like, you know, horror Christmas movies, just being Santa Claus being the killer. But I mean, it was entertaining. It was, I, I can't really say family friendly, but it kind of had like a family vibe situation going on in that movie if you saw it you know what i'm talking about but i just thought it could have been better so that's why it's under the disappointments and that's why it's at the top of the list it's not at the bottom i did enjoy it though in some form and number nine we have the menu like i said these aren't the worst of the um, disappointments so the menu i like again it was another movie i enjoyed in some form which is why i'm not calling these the worst movies just disappointments i just felt like it could have been done better it just felt like it was a little slow and dragged on a bit. And the direction they went for, I, I just wasn't a big fan of it that much, if that makes any sense. And then at number eight, we have Pray for the Devil. I like movies similar to that because I love horror movies in general. As you can see, most of these are horror related. And I just felt that this one was an okay watch. It was a lot better than some, you know, demonic possession movies, which is why it's not at the bottom of the list again. It was all right. I enjoyed it in some form. That's just why, like I said, these are disappointments, not really the worst movies. And let's see. Number seven, we have Jurassic World Dominion. Again, I'm not like a huge Jurassic Park fan in the to begin with. I do enjoy them. They're good. I do like them. I can see why people love them. But to me, they're not some of my favorites. Please don't hate on me. I mean, you can if you want. Comments are down below if you would like to do so. But Dominion, I thought, wasn't as bad as most people were, you know, were claiming it to be. Maybe it wasn't the greatest out of the Jurassic World movies. I don't know which... I enjoyed them in some form to an extent. But I just felt like 
again, like this is why it's not at the bottom of the list. It wasn't the worst. I did enjoy it. But at the same time, I just felt like it could have been better. And then number six, we have in Minions Rise of Gru. I'm not like a huge Minions uh, movie fan, but I do think they are funny, which is why I went to see it. And I'm an A-list member, so it's basically free in some form. So I just thought it could have been better. It wasn't as entertaining as I expected. And at number five, we have Thor Love and Thunder. And I will say this. Thor is my favorite of the Marvel movies, the cinematic universe, but at the same time, this was definitely almost the worst of the Thor movies, I will say that. It was still enjoyable in some form to me, so that's why it's mid-range. On the it's number five, it's in the middle. And number four, we have Morbius. Now this is getting to the bottom. Like out of all the movies that I had to go through that I kind of was disappointed with, Morbius was closer to the bottom compared to the other ones. But at the same time, I did enjoy Morbius. It was a lot better than I expected. But at the same time, I just felt like it could have been better overall. And then at number three, we have, where is it? Men. I understand why some people thought it was a very well done shot movie and very artsy or whatever else. But at the same time, I like very weird screwed up movies. But at the same time, this one just didn't do it for me. I mean, it was all right. This is why it's close to the bottom because it just didn't do it for me, even for the weird movies that I really do enjoy. But number two, we have Halloween Ends. All right. This is a very controversial movie. My bottom line of what I think about this movie is, if it was a movie of its own, without Michael Myers, not really attached to the Halloween franchise, it was a good movie. I enjoyed it. But being the last movie of the Michael Myers trilogy, the new one, I kind of understand. Like, this is what David Gordon, I believe his name is, that's what he was going for. He This Halloween Ends was what he wanted it to be. But... It's not what we wanted. I guess it really doesn't matter what we want as long as the movie turned out what he wanted it to be. It's the way he wanted to close out the story. But I was overall disappointed with it. This is why it's close to the bottom. Halloween ends just for the final movie and the trilogy of a Michael Myers movie. And supposedly the last movie that we're going to have of Michael Myers. Which I honestly think it can be. it's just going to be done by somebody else. But just the way it was done, being a Michael Myers movie, it was disappointing. But I did enjoy it as an aspect of you ignored everything else of Michael Myers. And I mean, you can't, it's hard to do so because you have Laurie Strode pretty much throughout the whole movie. But if you kind of just focus more on everything else that was happening, I thought it was a decent movie for like a psychological type movie. And number one, we have Jeepers Creepers Reborn. I love Jeepers Creepers. And I gave this one the chance. I will say to, to an extent, a very small extent, I thought it was eh. All right, it was okay, but it was definitely the worst of these movies that I had to choose to go through and choose the disappointing ones. I really feel like that was the most disappointing one of the year. Pretty bad, but at the same time, very small extent, I somewhat in some form thought it was all right, watchable in some form, I guess you can say. But that was my top 10 disappointments, disappointing movies of 2022. And then we're going to move on to the top 10 best. And of course, 10 being... Um, yeah, in this case, top 10 not being the best. I mean, 10 not being the best, but number one being the best, which is why the most disappointing one would be number one for the disappointments, if that makes sense. But number 10 for the best of 2022, to me, my opinion, number 10, we have Watcher. Um, there's so many Watcher movies and shows out there. I, this is the one that was actually released on Shudder and it was in the movie theaters very limited time. I didn't know what to expect from it, and I went and saw it, gave it a chance. I thought it was really done very well. I, for a slower pace movie, it was at a decent pace, and just, I guess you can say, a lot different than what you usually see, and I thought it was very well done. I just, I don't even know how to explain it. I just was very, in some form, relaxed with all the rain and just looking out the window, and just the shots overall. Like The shots were very well done, and the, the cast, I thought, did great, and the way it turned out, I did not expect I thought it was a very enjoyable movie. Not the best, but at the same time, it's one of the best of 2022, in my opinion. And number nine, we have Fall. That was another movie I just went in blind. This is why then these aren't mid-range or disappointed, because these are the movies, for the most part, that I went in expecting not much. And I walked out impressed, so that's why they're on this list. And Fall definitely did that. I didn't expect it to be as good as it was. I thought it was just going to be literally... 
not much of a story and just, you know, people just literally stuck somewhere that they're going to fall or something. But it actually had a story and it wasn't the whole movie. I mean, it was a good por portion, but it wasn't the whole movie of them being stuck somewhere. But I enjoyed it overall, which is why it was on my top 10 best. And number eight, we have Nope. I mean, I like Jordan Peele's movies, but I don't think Nope was the best of his three movies that he's released. It did. It was more. It was better than I expected, but definitely wasn't. I don't. Know, it was just. I thought it could have been done somewhat better, like the reveal of the whole invasion or whatever you want to call it. I just felt it could have been a. It was definitely unique, but I just felt like it could have been better. But overall, it was still enjoyable, which is why it's on my best. And number seven, we have Barbarian. That was another one. I just didn't know what to think when I saw the trailers. I went into it blind. Another movie that, to me, I thought was different than what you usually see. And I don't know if you catch on to this. 2022 was the year for horror movies. And my whole list, I believe, here for top ten best is all horror movies. Which is why I had to do a mid-range list of other movies that I did enjoy. But, you know, couldn't fit them on my top ten. I didn't want to do a top 15, a top 20. Because I didn't really have that many movies that I saw throughout the year to do so. But Barbarian definitely blew my mind away like it definitely did turned out not what i expected it was very enjoyable i understand some people felt that that was a movie with a lot of dumb decisions being made but at the same time a lot of the decisions that were being done that were dumb when they were about to repeat their mistake they kind of fixed it in some of the scenes when i thought they were going to repeat the same stupid mistakes they always they didn't always do that they fixed it and i just thought it was an overall enjoyable creepy vibe type of horror movie and number six we have scream scream five i guess you can say and um i thought it was a very well done i guess you can say passing the torch reboot some form type of movie they did bring back some of the legendary characters but of course you know with the new one coming out they're not coming back i believe just courtney cox is and i enjoyed the cast of the new one i thought they did great i'm very happy with the way it turned out and the connections that they did to the previous Scream movies. I just thought it was very well done. It was one of my favorites of 2022. But that's just my opinion. Number five, we have Black Phone. That was another one that, except with this one, I actually kind of went and I had a decent level expectation. And it did not disappoint. I really enjoyed it. I thought the cast did great. The kids were amazing. They were hilarious. And, you know, um, Ethan Hawke, I think it is, he... He does not need to have a motive. Like, when you're just doing crazy things, you're just messed up in the head, you're, you're going around just whatever you're doing, killing people or whatever, you don't need to have a motive. You're just mentally ill. So for those who are trying to say, oh, what's the motive? What's the reason behind why he's doing it? He doesn't need one. He's just messed up in the head. But I just thought it was an overall well-done movie. Um, some of the things could have been better, but overall, like I said, I just thought it was a well-done movie. Creepy. Cast was great. Gave off that old, old-time vibe during the time frame that it was supposed to be take place, if that makes sense. I'm just trying to get through this. I don't want to drag on too long. But number four, we have Terrifier 2. This was very tough for me to choose my final four. I just, it was very tough because Terrifier 2, as good as it was, a big step up from the first one, you know, like the practical gore effects and just out of the world kills. And Art the Clown is just amazing. He doesn't even have to say anything. And you, he makes you laugh and just tells a whole story just by not telling anything and just out of his actions of killing people and all that stuff. I just thought it was a very well done movie. I, I like the whole new story they brought to it and they introduced a kind of a new story to connect the characters together to Art the Clown to make a third movie and they're going to explain that story arc in the third one, I guess. But I it was definitely in my top four. And number three, we have Pearl. I will say this. I'm spoiler alert. Pearl and X were basically two of my favorites of the year, hands down. I just love them. And Mia Goth is just probably to me the best actress of the year. She's just amazing. Like it just Pearl and X. I don't know. Just to me, I thought X was somewhat better. It was more entertaining, more my style with slasher and all that. Pearl, it was kind of just like an origins of um the old lady from X, even though it was Mia Goth playing the old lady and um, the young, one of the younger girls in X, this was the origin story of the old lady explaining everything that happened previous to X. And then you're going to have, um, I forget, um, Maxine is going to be the next one. 
But um, yeah, I just enjoyed X overall more than Pearl. But Pearl is number three, so of course I just gave it away. Number two is X. Like it just the whole Texas Chainsaw Massacre vibe, the time frame that it took place in. I just thought it was it just gave that vibe, and I really liked how it was like that. And I love slashers in general, and Jenna Ortega, my girl. Whew, Wednesday, even I forgot to mention her on Scream as well. But she played in X, and I was just really excited about that. And um. I'll just have to say this. Number one, just in my opinion of everything that I've seen this year, the movie that impressed me the most, so I know some people say it was overhyped, but my number one movie is Smile. Holy crap, that movie just like, the score is amazing. A lot of the scenes, the score that they used, I just thought was very well done. Sounded great. And just the movie itself was just batshit crazy. I was like, what the hell? I just really enjoyed it overall and thought the cast did great. The ending was disappointed in some form but it did not take away from how much i enjoyed smile and just gonna get right into the top 10 mid-range now the ones that i just it was hard to choose they weren't i couldn't put them on the disappointments because they were they weren't that disappointed i enjoyed them but they, they just weren't my favorite either so i couldn't put them in the best so i have a top 10 mid-range in top 10 we have don't look at the demon that was an under-the-radar type horror movie, of course, demonic possession and all that. It has Fiona Dorif, which is Brad Dorif's daughter. And I just thought it was it was done well. I mean, I enjoyed it. It definitely was better than some of the movies I have in my disappointment list. So I just put it at the top of my mid-range. And number nine, we have Bones and All. I enjoyed that a lot. But at the same time, I didn't enjoy it as much as I was hoping. There was a lot that I felt could have been different. It just saw a lot of the scenes dragged on too much and you were just waiting for like the next thing to happen or waiting for something to happen. But at the same time, it was still enjoyable, which is why it's under my mid range. And number eight, we have spoiler alert, which was, um, I keep forgetting Sheldon from Big Bang Theory. I keep forgetting his real name, Parsons or something Parsons. Um, it was basically a very sad movie. I don't know if you, those watching this here have seen the trailer, but it was basically a, it's a drama, romantic comedy, some form about these two guys you know they kind of meet at a club and they decide to get together and one of the guys is going through a sickness and some rough times and all that i just thought it was a very well done movie i enjoyed it overall it was definitely emotional and it was funny at the same time i just had to put this on my mid-range because it wasn't the best but it wasn't disappointing number seven we have elvis I always watch movies related to like music artists. I'm not, most of the time I don't enjoy them, but Elvis I just thought was very well done. Again, not disappointing, but not one of the best. So I had to put that on the mid range. And number six, we have Uncharted. I enjoyed it. It was a, a lot closer to the game than I expected it to be. And Tom Holland's just amazing. And of course you got Mark Wahlberg. And I just thought it was close enough to you know, the games. And I love video games. I'm a big gamer. And I enjoyed it enough to put it on my mid-range. It wasn't disappointing. And it wasn't one of the best of the year. And number five, we have Black Adam. That one, I had to put in the middle of this mid-range one here. It's because I enjoyed it a lot more than I expected to. It was a lot better than I expected. I thought The Rock did a good job. Um, and the, cast, the other cast members as well did a good job. And I just thought... The story alone that they went with, I thought it was a decent movie. And a lot of the action scenes were very intense. And I thought they were great. So I had to put that in the middle of my mid-range. And number four, we have Doctor Strange. The Multiverse of Madness, of course. Um, I'm not like a huge Doctor Strange fan. But I definitely enjoyed that one a lot. And it was definitely a step up to, from the previous movie. Um, I just enjoyed it overall. Some of the stuff I felt like it could have been better. And uh, I forget the girl's name. Miss America. Or whatever the heck her name is. I, America Chavez or whatever her name is. I didn't expect to like it, but I ended up really liking her. So it's closer to my top of the list of the mid-range. And number three, we have Bodies, Bodies, Bodies. Holy crap, that movie. I had so much fun watching that. It's watching the trailer, I knew it was going to be fun. And the movie turned out to be a lot different than expected. Of course, they're playing the game. They're trying to find out who the killer is. But at the same time, there's quite a few twists in there. And I just thought the movie was very fun to watch. I just... I felt like I was in the house just watching everybody. I thought I was a part of the party. I just enjoyed it a lot, which is why it's close to the top of the list of the mid-range movies. And number two, we have Batman with Robert Pattinson. I think I said that right. A lot of the names sometimes slip my mind, especially when I'm just winging videos, filming stuff. Um, but it was a lot better than I expected. I enjoyed it overall. I thought it was too long, though. Some of the scenes did drag on. 
But it was one of my favorite of my mid-range mid -range movies, which didn't disappoint, but was better than I expected and wasn't best. And from the best of my list, but it was it's near the top of my list, of course. And then, of course, number one, we have Black Panther Wakanda Forever. They did great. They did, they did a great job with that movie without the original Black Panther. Again, another name slipped in my mind. My, pardon me. I'm sorry about that. And they did a great job of changing scripts and continuing on the story due to obvious circumstances. And I it just, out of my mid-range movies that, I to me, weren't, weren't my favorites, but at the same time did not disappoint. This was at the top of my list of the mid-range. So I'm just going to close out this video right here. Drop some comments down below, guys, and let me know what you thought about this list. If you like the little spin I put on it with the disappointments, the mid-range, and then my best, what you thought about my choices. And drop some comments down below just interact to anything about those movies and what were some of your favorites of 2022 and some of your worst. But if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you're watching this, hopefully everybody here has a happy new year. I'm going to try to upload this video tonight on New Year's Eve along with another video and hopefully... If not, tomorrow I'll still say Happy New Year if this is released on New Year's Day. But if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel, please subscribe if you enjoy content similar to this. And if you already subscribed, thank you for coming back. I appreciate it. But I will see you all in the next one. Take care.